This is my main charger that I use in the workshop and this is the battery powered unit that I use in the field for charging and they both share the same ubiquitous two line backlit display. You would think in these days of colour LCD panels, touch screens and all that good stuff that somebody would come up with a much better display and they have. One company that has embraced new technology though are GT Power. Look at this lovely colour interface and touchscreen too. What more could you want? Let's go ahead now and see what comes with it in the box. The presentation box gives us the basic information, a 4 inch LCD panel which is touch sensitive, AC or DC input power and an output power equivalent to 10 amps or 100 watts. More specifications on the back, input voltage is universal, 100 to 240 volts AC or you can power it from an external battery, 10 volts to 18 volts. Battery types, lithium high voltage, lithium polymer, lithium ion, lithium ferric, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium and lead acid. Up to six cells for lithium, up to 14 cells for nickel metal hydride or NICAD and 20 volts for lead acid, so just a standard 12 volt battery will be charged. 10 amps, 100 watts and it can discharge at up to 3 amps or 8 watts. The unit was in a plastic bag which I've taken it out of. A comprehensive set of instructions and a bunch of cables. Uh, mains cable, this appears to be for supplying power to the unit. On the side here next to the AC input is a DC input jack. So you could connect that up to a 12 volt battery or something in the field. Just whilst we're looking at this side, there is a connector here, which is a standard type of connector for a temperature sensor and a micro USB connection, which is used to upgrade the firmware. I don't think there's any possibility of outputting data to your computer via this port, only for upgrades. On this side then, the cooling fan, main battery connections and the balance ports up to 6S. On the front there's a neat magnetic holder for the touch screen. You can touch the screen clearly with your finger. That's, uh, this is quite a neat idea. Nothing else to comment on. A bunch of charging leads. One thing which is glaringly obvious from the get-go is that there is no XT60 connector. This is the main lead with the Dean's type connector on it and you're provided with a connection for JST, crocodile leads, receiver pack charger. One of these things which I've never worked out what it is, something to do with glow engines I assume. Personally I wouldn't want to see that. I would want to see included an XT60 connector. I don't know whether it's just in Europe but it's certainly at my club everybody uses XT60. I'm not aware of anybody that uses these Deans type connectors. Moving on then let's take a look at the interface itself and the options that it gives us. If things look a little out of focus to you it's purely my camera setup. The screen itself is nice and crisp and clear. Anybody that's ever tried to photograph or film a reflective surface can sympathise with the challenge. It's an absolute nightmare. I've done my best so um, I hope that you can see everything clearly. Main buttons along the bottom then fairly self-explanatory. There are eight memory locations that you can configure and that's a quick way of obviously getting to settings that you use on a regular basis. The next one is our selection of which battery type. Then our options of store, fast charge, balance charge, discharge, standard charge and IR test. I hadn't seen that before. The next tab then we can adjust the number of cells either by touching on the plus and minus or using the slider. 
and then our current for charging and discharging. I'm going to charge a 2200C battery at 2C. Put that at 4.2 amps. And here we have the settings for the device itself. Save settings is how you get the settings into the memory locations. Brightness, self-explanatory, whether you like the buzzer on or off, and you can choose different colors for the buttons. You can adjust the different safety options here. And there's a set of settings that you can fine tune, for example, Delta Peak for particular nickel metal hydride or NICAD packs. Finally, in the system menu, you can calibrate the touch screen, update the firmware, change your language. You can change it into Russian, that's handy. Language appears to have only Russian and English. <laughs> Curious. Voltage and current calibration. I'm not going to do that, but you can calibrate the unit using that menu. Restore to the factory settings and then back to the main menu. I've just connected up a 2200 LiPo flight pack and I'm curious to see what the IR test makes of it. Now that is interesting. There's been no mention in the manual of the ability to do this and I'm very happy to see it. I use the IR values to keep a tab on the performance of my cells. This particular pack I'm not liking very much as there's too much variation from 23 milliohms, 9 milliohms and only 1 milliohm. I happen to know this pack is not in particularly good condition. That's interesting to see. Move on now and take a look at say the balance charge and hit the start button. We can see the individual cell voltages mirrored here, 385, 386, 386, so fairly close in voltage. You can see here the pack voltage as it's charging, so 11.89 and rising, and the average voltage per cell and the gap between the different cells. All good stuff to know. We've got the time elapsed up there and the state which is charging along the bottom here. We can see the amount of milliampere hours going into the cell. We have our current 4.2 amps that I set and the equivalent power thereof. We've got like the speedo indication there of the current and I have no external temperature sensor connected so that's at zero degrees. The internal temperature 39. Uh, actually in the room here at the moment it's about 35 so I'm not surprised that that do not take that as an indication of the unit's performance. It is really hot here today. You can see the graphical representation. That may be a bit of overkill for you. For example, we're not going to need the outside temperature. The inside temperature is not very interesting either. Neither is the watts. So we're left now with the green being the charging current, which is constant at this point in time. Our battery voltage, which is climbing slowly, 12.07 there. And the yellow line at the bottom is the milliampere hours. So here it's just passing 153 milliampere hours. Yellow line there, that's 200. Everything then is available to you at a glance. There's no facility to change the values once the charging or whichever program you've chosen takes place. I've changed the settings. If we go, if we look back in the memory, this particular set of settings has not been stored. If we go back to settings and say save in location two, yes. Go back to the memory now, we can see that, that our settings have been saved there as a 3S 
at 4.2 amps balance charge. You know, that's an easier way of finding your commonly used values much easier than the older style interface. In conclusion then, I'm really liking this charger. It's a very capable 100 watt device. Comes in only around $65. With the touchscreen and the graphical interface, I really liking that. One critique would be the lack of the XT60 connector and possibly the fact that the lowest charge rate is 200 milliamps. I'd really like to see that down to 100 milliamps for smaller packs. Balance that against the ability to upgrade the firmware and for me the cherry on the cake was the ability to measure the internal resistance. I find that very very useful indeed and that just about seals the deal for me. Many thanks to James at GT Power. I really suggest you check out their website. They have a, a lot of very novel stuff on their site. Check it out. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Many thanks for watching.